I'm not superstitious, but I have always run the Land's End to St Ives route um, a few weeks before the arc, probably just to make sure that I know it like the back of my hand, just so I can switch off. It just gives me confidence. I enjoy running it. It's such a technical piece of terrain um, during the day, let alone overnight. I think last year I ran it by myself and actually it's a little bit scary. I don't know, you haven't got the race support, um, but you know, there's always someone at the end of the phone if you had a phone signal. Reasonable night's sleep, so that's good. Always a benefit. I think it's always difficult the night before. It's a few tossy turny moments, as always. Check out the new shoes. <laughs> the Ark of Attrition. Why is it number six? I asked myself number six as well. Um, every time I finish that race, I'm like, maybe not next year. And the entries come back and I'm like, it's my local race. It's on the coastline that I love. All I have to do is go out my front door and it's there. And it's just the weather conditions suit me. I don't like running in hot weather. And I have got a good history with the race. Yes, I have my ups and downs like everyone and it just keeps biting me in the bum to come back and race again. It started off with 50 runners. Um, this year there's 270 on the 100. We have about another 100 on the wait list that won't get in. So it's grown from a little local race into an international race. Now we have people from Canada, Argentina. I think I was speaking to somebody from Argentina that's flown in just for the race. So it's not just a local event anymore. It's a race that's never had less than 50% DNF So. At least half of you probably will be, you know, DNFs on this, just think about that. 78% is the worst, but it's never been under 50%. Okay, so that's the task you have ahead of you. Laura runs for our ultra team. She won this race last year. I'll say no more. Yay! Thank you, guys. Good work, Laura. This guy, Steve Wyatt, is the legend of the arc. He has won this race, or joint won this race, four times. He was a bit shit last year because he was second. <laughs> <laughs> but he wants that crown back. So, big hand for us, uh, Steve Wyatt. No one knows his race better than him.
early days, but yeah, just trying not to go off route. Hey Stuart. Unfortunately, we've just had her first retiree of the race. She's been picked up by our medical team and she's fine, but uh, yeah, number one bites of dust, three hours, nine minutes. My training regime for the arc, uh, let's just say it's a bit hit and miss. Um, sometimes I'm able to get out, I've got a lot of commitment from family and my work, so it's finding the balance and the time. Christmas is never an easy time to train, is it? Let's be honest, there's lots of joyous celebrations going on and I am known to join in quite a lot. Two minutes to four. Two minutes. Twenty-five and a bit miles in. It was raining really badly when we started the run. Uh, momentum, please. Yeah. No, no. I think everyone else is going slow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you hit Lizard the same time as Kim Collison hit Lizard last year. I'm being sick. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. Cheerio, guys. I had a toenail removed, which is one of the issues for long distance running. As everyone will know, they've probably lost a toenail or two over the years. So that um, set me back a little bit. So I started in November with a few runs. And also holidays. I've been on holiday in South Africa, which again, 30 degrees and hot, humid weather. It's been brilliant um, being out on holiday, but maybe not the best conditions for arc training, but at least I've had a bit more time this year. Red pillars. Right. You need rice pudding? You need rice pudding? Oh, that's good. Hi guys, I'm going to A cup of tea with two sugars, please. Have you got one? Yeah, grand. Do you need a bottle with Phil Steve? No, I'm right. How's it going, Steve? Okay. Yeah. Good. yeah. Nice little rain light jacket there. She's gone. Yeah, it's the best. Right. <laughs> 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 oh, Steve.
Well done, Steve. Right. Well done, Steve. Well done, Steve. Keep it going, mate. Well done. Anything else on the band? Bye. Bye. I'll see, see you later, guys. Love you, guys. Love you. Bye. See you in the morning. I'll make a fresh cup of tea if you want it. Well done, fella. Good man. Well done. Um, I might go through Chaucer's coat. Chaucer's water. We can do that. Something we can't cope with. Um. You went, yeah. yeah. I could see him coming across. Just on the previous previous headland, mate. So yeah. you, you've got a, a good chunk of time, mate. Amazing. Persistent, isn't he? Awesome, mate. Awesome running. See you at Land's End. but the, the gap is still the same. I think I, 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 there's a lot of, um, I do a lot of processing before a race, before, sometimes I do, but the, with the arc, especially if I'm only running a very uh, a single race or you know one race in a year that uh, is my A race, is that right? Um, I will probably put a little bit more mental thought into just making sure I'm in the right frame of mind before I start that race so before I start there's a lot of processing that goes on and, and maybe that just comes out in the race where I'm focused you know people have uh, run with me and I you know sometimes I don't speak it's it's just the way that I run I don't I don't blurt anything out I'm just there to, to run the race and once I've run the race then I can de-stress and go from there but you know running a race isn't necessarily stressful um, my body probably does think so because it's often I'm often ill during a race, um, which plays havoc with my hydration and my eating. But I just have to deal with that, and maybe that's where my focus comes from. You just got to keep focusing. I'm hanging on my ass though. Yeah, but it's not a day. <laughs> you know. What do you need? Just sit down and have a cup of tea.
Dig in, fella, dig in. When I came down to Cornwall, we moved down here and I was running with uh, the Hale Runners and on the dunes mainly. All my runs were done, training runs were mainly done on the dunes because I had a dog. So just enjoyed the outdoors, running through the Towers. I know it like the back of my hand. The road running kind of just become a bit monotonous. I did a full year, I think, in 2008, which culminated in the marathon. Finishing that on a high, I ended up getting my little Grand Prix trophy, and being excited about that, and then kids happened. Once kids had happened, four years later, uh, 2012, I stood on the start line of the UTSW uh, 100 here, starting in Porth Leven on my home turf did a 100 mile race just to see whether or not I could actually challenge myself to run 100 miles in a one -er, and I achieved it. Came second along with Duncan Oates. Uh, it just uh, felt like a, an, a, an awesome achievement and I just from there wanted to be able to do more and more and that's where my uh, long distance running career started. Awesome, excellent dude. 
<laughs> Machine springs to mind. Right, so, do a celebrity. Um, so, Bassett, that's easy. Bassett's done. Ah, oh, that's the f***ing home stretch then. Yes. Awesome. See you at Lighthouse, yeah? I want you to run the whole hill. <laughs> Was good. I have no idea where this has come from. It was so unexpected. I have no idea how this has happened. I keep telling myself, yeah, yeah. stay strong. You've been focused over. for 97 and a half miles, mate, so let's keep that focus. The longest solo run I've ever done. It's absolutely horrible. <laughs> is just just with a smile on the face
like we in the last 20 kilometers. <laughs> Uh, the nickname The Pirate came from a, an infamous run that we did between Mausel and Land's End. It was a training run. Uh, we were just out with a group of us who were all doing the classic quarter. Uh, I think I might have been in the front for some reason and came across this black and red pirate hat which I proceeded to wear. I don't know why it was on the coast path, it was in the middle of nowhere and then ran with it all the way to the end uh, of the run at Land's End. It was a, it's a classic hat, love it to bits, and I have worn it in several races. Uh, I always look at this hat with fond memories because I think I ended up exchanging this for my car keys, which I lost somewhere on that run. So £150 later, uh, and one pirate hat exchanged. It was a fair, fair exchange, I think. Well, it was the most, by far, the most competitive race so far at, uh, in the 100. Um, it was what we always envisaged. It was a proper, proper race from, uh, with tactics. To see everybody glued to that race, right, you know, all the checkpoints, people, mobile crews, everybody had their phones out. And everybody was talking about the race at the sharp end of the 100. And, you know, Steve, and who's this dude? And who's the guy? We've never heard of the guy. Where does he come from? Uh, and because Tristan was uh, new to it and people, although I tipped him to do well, um, people didn't really know because he'd not done a 100 mile before and people were saying how good a shape Steve was in this year that he'd actually looked a bit focused on it. There was a different attitude definitely to, his, to Steve's approach. I think you know, his friends commented how, uh, you know, how more focused he was on this year and it showed. He had a proper race but he, he fought it all the way to the end. He, uh, you know, when we saw, um, you know, he was overtaken, we thought, hmm, okay, this, uh, this is going to be another, but he did fight back like he did, and he wanted it, and it showed. We don't sleep for three days, uh, Chris doesn't sleep for three days either, really. Stop pointing that camera at me. <laughs> <laughs> the usual uh, DNF rate of almost spot on 50%. I think if it was raining yesterday daytime, we'd have had a lot more, but um, yeah, 50%. And uh, I think it was 28% in the 50, which was high, a lot higher than last year. So obviously the conditions, under, we had quite a few timed out on the 50. Um, I think the conditions on the foot had a real effect on the sort of 50 newbies to it who might have done, you know, like the rats and things like that, which is obviously a summer race and thought, you know, we're going to move up to this. But I think it caught a lot of them out time-wise. <laughs> the daughter's here, Mark. <laughs> I've always had a vision from this race for the last few years, you know, what started off as a local race when you did it for the first time and, you know, there was 53 people I think on the first race, um, all locals, I think we probably knew every single person in it. Now they're flying in from Argentina, they, I was talking to a Latvian guy in there and he's like, he was blown away by the race, you know, I think we had 80 nationalities this year, which, you know, for a race in Cornwall is pretty good. I always wanted to see it as a Western States qualifier. 
and um, I think we need around 320 starters. We're already in talks with the RD at uh, Western States, we're, and uh, we know what we've got to do to get, get it, and I think that will bring it to another level again. Um, so that's what we'll be aiming for. Planning's already started today, booking the venues and stuff for next year, so um, yeah, full steam ahead again for a bigger and uh, bigger arc again next year.